Hey there. So a common question I get, and the reason why I'm sending in this is that um, pain with activity is tough. A lot of times when we have pain, we want to stop doing everything completely. Or sometimes we think when we have pain, it's like, ah, just push through, it'll be fine. When in reality, we don't want to do either. We want to find that halfway between point, the Goldilocks zone, so to say. Not too much, not too little, just right. And this step-by-step -step approach to dealing with painful activity will help you with that. So let's get started. So first thing, I'll move my face out of the way. The uh, traffic light rule for pain with activity. So you, this may look familiar to you. It's the same traffic light that I sent to you or that was in your um, new patient packet and as well that I have, um, you likely got into an email. It's the same principles here. So I'm not gonna read it to you. You already know you have this sheet or if you don't, you can take a minute and um, pause this and take a look at it here. Um, I'll pick out the main aspects between red, yellow, and green. Okay, so the biggest thing between red versus yellow and green is that after activity, there's a decrease in range of motion or increased stiffness or a loss in strength or function. So not only is it painful, but your ability and your movement is impaired. That's the biggest distinguishing factor. Um, with, uh, with red, typically you see a spike in pain and it causes you to stop activity, just hurts too much. And then it can also persist for weeks. So that plan is you wanna contact me or someone else you trust. Uh, yellow and green is likely, hopefully more green, is where you'll spend a lot of time determining between the two. So yellow, you'll have a spike in pain. And but one of the big things that it can start increasing. If it starts increasing your activity, it's best to peel back or just stop altogether. And then the pain ends up being worse afterward for a couple of days afterward. But hey, there's no change in range of motion, strength, or function, so it's not a red. Okay. Um, in this case, you'll want to take a step back on the ladder, which we'll go over in just a second. And you'll want to go to your previous green light activity level, stick there for a while, and then consider retesting or moving up the ladder. Green is pain during activity, but it's tolerable. You're fine with it. It doesn't get worse during activity, and actually it might get better during activity as common as you continue to move. And then it's no worse um, two to 24 hours afterward, no change in your range of motion, strength, or function. At that point, you can consider going up the ladder, which we'll go over now, is this is the ladder approach. We wanna go step-by-step step with activity. What we really wanna avoid is feeling good and then jumping way up because you think everything's fine and then you end up causing a re-entry. Don't want that. So the ladder represents increased activity. So that's gonna be an increase in either frequency, intensity, or duration. Frequency is how often, right? So like one day a week versus five days a week. Intensity is like saying uh, sprinting versus jogging or a lightweight versus heavyweight. And then duration is how long you do it. So whether it's reps or for how long you run. Um, so first to do this, you need to establish a baseline activity. You wanna choose an activity you believe has green light qualities, typically maybe 50% of what you're used to doing. Uh, perform the activity and then determine your color with the stoplight rule or the traffic light rule afterward. All right. So um, and then let's use running for an example. So set a baseline. Let's say that you typically are used to running five miles. So we're going to use one. Right. Let's use one mile or maybe two. Let's go two miles. Two miles is your baseline. You know, you can do that. You run, you do it. It's definitely a green light. OK, so then now that you've determined that. You have your baseline, and so now after, now you can consider maybe adding a little bit more. So maybe we go up to two and a half or three. Let's call it three. So take a step up from your baseline activity, one to 10%. Um, to stick with that, let's go two and a half. Um, so we'll go run for two and a half miles, and then we wait 24 hours to determine the color, and then you follow the traffic light guidelines. So let's say that you know that we had a little bit of pain during, but it wasn't worse afterward. Um, it didn't increase, so that's another green light. We're good at two and a half miles. All right, next time let's try three. Good, green light. And now you're like, hey, three's pretty good. Maybe let's, let's try four, okay? And then you go up here, you're like, uh, when you're running four, you're, you know, at the three and a half mile point, you know, the pain started to increase, and you know, you decide to stop, and then afterward, it lingered for at least a good two to three days. Uh, luckily though, no loss in your range of motion, strength, or function, so it's not a red light, right? So four is a little bit too much. Let's take a step back down here to that three. We wanna hang out here, run three miles for a couple more bouts for maybe a couple more days. And then once you've got those green lights, then you can go ahead and try four again. At that point, it's likely four is gonna be a green light and you can keep progressing. So this is important because we had a baseline, we knew what we could do. When we did a little too much, we were able to take a step back. When you jump too much too soon, say we did, you know, baseline was two miles, then we did two and a half, then we did three, and we got, you know, really, really confident. We're like, hey, let's go for six, right? And you jump up here, oops. 
that causes an issue, that sets you back further. It's a re-injury. You're not rehabbing appropriately. Uh, we're, we're causing more problems than good, right? And so by taking the step-by-step -step approach, you can stay active, which is very important for rehab, but also make sure that you're not overdoing it so it doesn't take longer to rehab. Um, so there's a great model to stay active when you have pain with activity. And actually, if you don't have pain, it's a useful model to progressively get better, stronger, faster. All right, thanks for listening to me, and I hope this is helpful. If you have any further questions, or you're having a hard time figuring it out, determining what light you are, or even getting a baseline activity, I can help you out with it. So just reply back to me, drburtreachcaro.com. You can always find us or find me at these places. Uh, you know, I have Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, a lot of video reference, references that I can email to you. Uh, and yeah, you can also find me at the golf course too, uh, especially in the summer, obviously. So uh, get a hold of me if you have any questions. I hope this is very helpful. And you have a good one.